Hey Game Makers, Pixelated Pope here, and welcome to part two of my tutorial series on parallax scrolling in Game Maker. I initially thought I could cover the next two effects in one video, but I think I'm going to need one more episode after this one. In this part, we're going to focus on the infinite type of parallax scrolling. And at the end of the video, I'll show how the display manager we built in the resolution and aspect ratio management tutorial can greatly improve the visual quality of these scrolling effects. But for now, let's go to space. Okay, since it's been a while, let's look at the demo again. We have a spaceship and three layers of space. As I fly around, the stars move past me, giving the sensation of moving very fast through space. So yeah, it's a cool effect, but what's actually happening? I'm going to run the demo again, but this time without views, so we can get a better idea of what's going on. This all sort of looks crazy right now, so let's remove tiling so we can see what's going on more clearly. Now we can see our three background layers with no tiling. Each has an orange border around it. The red border is where the view would be if we were using it. So let's fly towards the bottom right corner very slowly and see what happens. Pay attention to the top left corner of the orange squares and specifically how they compare to the center point, marked in green, of my ship. Immediately, one layer is moving the opposite direction and out of sight. The other two layers are moving with us, but the further we move down, the further behind us they get. Let's go the opposite direction and see what happens. Okay, so what's actually going on? It's really quite simple, but I think it might be easier to explain if we go straight to the code. We're back in the tutorial project we were working on in the last video, and I have a ship sprite, as well as two star backgrounds. Let's create our room. Call it something like room space and set the room speed to 60. The room size itself is completely unimportant. Our game is infinite, so our room size could be 16 by 16 and it wouldn't really matter since we are using views and will be consistently going well beyond the boundaries of our room at any given time. Switch to the background tab. Set background zero to use the background stars BG and keep all tiling enabled. Set both background 1 and 2 to background stars 1. If you aren't using the display manager, set up your views. I recommend 456 by 256 or something like that, but it really doesn't matter since everything tiles infinitely. Since we're here, it's worth harping on the object following setting again. This setting is really awful for experienced GM users for a number of reasons. In this instance, it's especially awful because it won't allow you to move the view outside of the room making our universe sufficiently less infinite. So we're not going to use it, and we'll once again be positioning the view manually in the ship object. Speaking of which, it's time to start putting that together. Create a new object, and give it a name like Object Ship. Set the sprite to Sprite Ship. Notice that by default the ship is facing right, not up. Since the direction 0 is to the right in GM, this makes things a lot easier, so keep that in mind for any top-down game if you plan on rotating something. Okay, first, let's set up some basic ship properties. Add a create event and drop a code block. Let's set a max speed, acceleration, brake speed, and a turn speed for our ship. Now you might be thinking to yourself, 1 seems awfully slow for a spaceship with an infinite universe to explore. And you'd be right. But what's cool about this effect is that actual speed of your object doesn't really matter. We'll be moving all the backgrounds around your ship, so our top speed is irrelevant. You can tune it to the max speed of 1, 10, or 10,000, and we can make it look the exact same for all three speeds by adjusting a couple of values. You'll more than likely find a good reason for your speed to be faster than 1. I just want to demonstrate that you don't need to actually be moving at the speed of light to make it appear like you are. Let's get this guy moving. Add a step event and drop some code in there. We aren't going to do anything too fancy, so I'm just going to speed this up, and if you need to pause to examine the code, you can. Okay, one more thing before we run this again. Let's get the view following us. Add another block of code to the step event and we'll just add some simple view following code. Let's see what we got. 
Go drop an instance of the object in the room. Make sure the room is at the top of your list or just below your display manager room if you're using one and run the game. We're going to be running the game frequently so you can see the effect of each change we make. So this looks basically horrible. We can't even see our three layers, just the background layer. What gives? Well, technically, all three of my layers are the exact same image. Just the backmost one has a black background and the other on a transparent background. So when they are all perfectly positioned on top of each other, you can't really tell they're there at all. But now we can start doing the fun stuff. Let's head back to the ship step event and start getting these backgrounds scrolling properly. Open the update view code block and we'll add our layer scrolling here. As I've said multiple times, we have three background layers behind our ship, 0, 1, and 2. To move them, we are going to take our ship's current position and multiply it by a number between 0 and 1. The closer that number is to 1, the slower the background will move because the new position will be close to our current position. Let's examine that for a second. If I use the value 0.9 as my multiplier when my x is 0, the background's x is also 0. When my x is 10, its x is 9. So I will appear to only have moved one pixel even though I moved 10. That continues on infinitely. If we move 10,000 pixels, it will have moved 9,000 pixels. That's how the illusion is created. So the further in the distance we want the background to appear, the closer it should match our current position. Since we want background zero to look really far away, let's use a really high number like 0.9. The next two layers should use smaller numbers so they appear closer. You can tune these numbers a bit to adjust the effect if you want. And that's it. Run the game again and let's see the difference. So we're getting there, but it still feels like we're moving really slowly. And sometimes these patterns line up and it creates this weird distortion that is really bad. So there's a lot of stuff we could fix visually. Let's go take care of some of that. Back to the create event and add a new code block. In this block, we're going to mess with some of the background properties in order to differentiate the different layers a bit and reduce some of the noisiness. This may not be necessary if you've crafted your background art with a lot of care, which I clearly have not. Let's leave background zero alone and just worry about backgrounds one and two. For BG1, let's reduce the alpha by half and scale it up by 1.5. For BG2, let's scale the stars way up since they are closer to the camera and also reduce their alpha to half. Now, you may be wondering, I watched your resolution tutorial and you said scaling things up to 1.5x and 2.5x is really bad, and you are right. But in this case, because my art is so simple and generally noisy already, that distortion will be less of an issue. If you had some really nice pixel stars and nebula backgrounds, absolutely do not do what I'm doing. But let's run again and see how everything looks. The starscape is less hard on the eyes now, but it still feels like we are pushing through space molasses. So let's fix that without upping our speed. First, open up the room editor and go to the backgrounds tab. Select background two and check the foreground image box. This option puts this layer on top of everything but the GUI layer. So this layer is going to be a layer really close to the camera to make us feel like we are zipping through space. Let's head back to the ship step event. So if a number closer to one is slower, then a number closer to zero must be faster, right? So let's change the multiplier on background two to be 0 0.001. Hmm, that uh, didn't make much of a difference, did it? Still feels like we're moving pretty slow. So what do we do? The further we are below one, the faster it moves. So what's way below one? Negative numbers. Rather than moving with us, this will force the background to move in the opposite direction, creating an incredible sense of speed. So set background two's position to be negative x and y times, let's say, 20. There we go. Now, even though our max speed is still one, it appears like we are absolutely blasting through space. And the stars in the background seem to be even further away because of how slowly they are scrolling compared to how fast we feel like we are moving.
Now, just for fun, let's add a cool little engine trail to our ship in the laziest way possible. Go to the Draw tab and drop a Create Effect block. Set the type to Spark, X and Y to 0, Size to Medium, Color your choice, and set to Above Objects. Why Above Objects? Because I think this is possibly bugged? If we set it to Below, it will appear Above. I don't know why. Finally, check the relative box. And there you have it. The effect is complete, but I promised we would do some view zooming and rotation stuff here. It doesn't have a lot to do with parallax scrolling itself, but if you are making this type of game, it could be useful for you. Okay, back to the creative end of the ship. To get zooming working, we need a few new variables. First, the level of zoom. By default, this will be 1. Increasing this value will zoom the camera in, while reducing it towards 0 will zoom out. Since we are going to be constantly changing our view size to create this zooming effect, we need to save our base view size, what it should be at 1x zoom. If you are using the display manager, this would be your ideal width and height. But in this project, I trust it's whatever the view is at when the object is created. So add two variables, view w, view h, and set them to equal to their view equivalent. Let's head to the step event and into our code that manages our view. Since we're going to be messing with our view size, positioning the view will be the last thing we want to do. So above that, let's listen to the controls for zooming. I'm going to use X and Z. Then I want to clamp our view zoom value so that we can't zoom in infinitely and can't zoom out infinitely. Then it's as easy as dividing our base width and height by our current zoom to get our new size. Run the game. Now I can use Z to zoom in and X to zoom out. YouTube's video compression probably isn't happy about this, but even if you saw exactly what I was seeing, you probably wouldn't be too impressed. The game looks like absolute hot garbage when zoomed out. We'll fix that in a little bit. First, let's make it so our ship is always moving up and that the view spins around to match the ship's angle. It's actually really easy. Let's head back to where we managed the view and right below our view centering code add this line. View angle equals negative image angle plus 90. Okay, this is a bit weird. And as of recording, the example image in the documentation for view angle is actually wrong. When you set view angle, you aren't rotating the view frame. You are rotating the world while the view stays stationary. As such, view angle seems to work the opposite of every other angle variable outside of the physics engine. So if we try to get the view's angle to match something in our game world, such as our ship, we need to account for this opposite behavior. That's why we set our view angle to negative image angle. The plus 90 is to account for our ship facing to the right instead of facing up by default. Let's run the game and see how that looks. Now, as we fly around, our ship is always facing up, and when we rotate, we appear to stay stationary while the world spins around us, and of course, we can still zoom in and out. So now let's stop your eyes from bleeding, eh? You may have noticed that my window is pretty large. The game itself is pretty low res and is just being scaled up to fill the window. This is default GM behavior when your window size is larger than your view and your application surface. Look closely at the stars. They are really blurry and pixely, and as they scroll they do this sort of marching pixels effect that makes them look really bad. But with the magic of the display manager, I can press one button to resize the application surface to match the resolution of my window size and everything magically smooths out. Let's zoom in and out and turn it off and on again. Not sure how my video compression is handling this, but it looks horrible, right? And it's all cleaned up. Now let's zoom in and do it again. How cool is that? Resizing your app surface is a fast way to make all of your sprite scaling and rotations look a whole lot better really fast. But be warned, this is effectively increasing the resolution of your game, and as such, there will be a performance hit. Let's see how this affects the demo from the last video. See how jittery the scrolling is? The clouds and mountains sort of just lurch forward in big jumps. Look at the peaks of the mountains. How awful does that look? Now we enable subpixels and silky smooth scrolling. And the larger your window, the smoother it will be.
As of right now, you really do know everything about parallax scrolling I have to teach you. In part three, all we're gonna do is pull all three types together and then make the video twice as long as it needs to be by allowing the view to be zoomed in and out while maintaining the parallax effect. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorials, leave a comment down below. If you like this video and want me to keep making things like it, hit those like and subscribe buttons. If I've piqued your curiosity about this display manager thing, check out my tutorial on resolution and aspect ratio management. Or, if you're in the mood for something a little different, check out the latest episode of Pixelated Pope Private Investigator in the case of the Leaky World Builder. Thanks for watching, now go make something awesome!